He grew up to be over six feet tall, a fashionable dresser, and friends with some of the most famous Americans of his time. But he started his life in a corner of the Austrian Empire. In today's video, we're talking about the great Nikola Tesla. When Nikola Tesla was born, the Austrian Empire it still existed. An ethnic Serb, he came into the world in modern-day Croatia on July 10, 1856. His birth seemed to foreshadow his life's work, as his mother was in labor during a massive lightning storm. The lightning that flashed during Tesla's birth was considered to be an ill omen by the midwife, but Tesla's mother didn't agree. Instead, she proclaimed that he will be a child of light. His mother was not wrong. As we know today, Tesla is the reason we have alternating current electricity. But on top of that, starting in childhood, Tesla saw flashes of light that reportedly came to him before he had ideas. There is another side to the story of these flashes of light that has emerged, however. It's possible that these flashes or visions were actually caused by a traumatic event that he witnessed in his childhood. When Tesla was just five years old, he saw his only brother, Dane, die in a horse riding accident. It was after this that Tesla began having the flashes of light. And his visions. These were something that would stay with him for the rest of his life. The family they lived in a modest home, one that has since been rebuilt and has a statue of Tesla in the yard. Tesla's father was an Eastern Orthodox minister, and his mother was a brilliant woman who was an inventor herself. She created mechanical appliances to use around the house, and her tinkering and creative thinking undoubtedly influenced her son. Tesla's mother also had an incredible memory. She could memorize entire epic poems, and Tesla credited his own photographic memory to the genes that he inherited from his mother. He memorized entire books. He visualized his projects and ideas, and he spoke several languages. In his early years at school, Tesla's studies focused on German, maths, and religion. By the time he entered the later years of his education, science had become a key focus. He moved away from his family in order to attend the Higher Real Gymnasium. Here, Tesla was accused of cheating because of his photographic memory. His outstanding memory allowed him to perform integral calculus using only his mind. No pen or paper was required, and this led his teachers to become suspicious. Nonetheless, Tesla was able to finish the necessary work to graduate in only three years instead of the customary four. During his three years at the Higher Real Gymnasium, Tesla was introduced to a phenomenon that ultimately defined his career and how he's remembered today. In his physics class, the teacher demonstrated electricity, and Tesla was utterly fascinated by it. But it would be some time before he could launch a career studying and using electricity. He became ill shortly after graduating in 1873. For nine months, he was bedridden with cholera and only narrowly escaped death. His brush with death helped form Tesla's lifelong germophobic tendencies. He was so fearful of germs that it took him 18 napkins to get through a single meal. In 1874, Tesla was expected to be conscripted into the military, and he had no interest in serving, so he managed to escape the requirement by running away to a mountainous region where he was able to disguise himself as a hunter. After a year, Tesla was able to emerge from the mountains and start seriously studying science. He began attending classes at Austria Polytechnic, where he quickly showed himself to be both a talented and diligent student. In fact, he may actually have been a little too diligent. Years after he left the school and after his father father had died, Tesla discovered a pile of letters that the school sent to his father, warning them that Tesla was overworking himself. According to Tesla himself, he was working incredibly hard, getting up at 3 a.m. and not going to bed until 11 p.m. During that time, he was fully focused on his studies. He didn't even take off holidays or Sundays from this routine. By the time his first year was over, he had passed twice as many exams as he needed to and received the highest grades that were possible. But even someone with a brain like Tesla's couldn't sustain that kind of schedule. His second year in school was a complete reversal from his first. After losing a scholarship at the end of his second year, Tesla began gambling. Gambling wasn't just a pastime for him, though. He was totally addicted to it. He lost his tuition money gambling, and then when final exams rolled around, he was unprepared to take them. Indeed, he never did take them and he never graduated. Unwilling to face his family and tell them that he never graduated, Tesla simply fled to the town of Maribor and took up work as a draftsman. It was here that he started gambling again, playing cards on the street. At first, some of Tesla's friends thought that he had drowned, but Tesla's father figured out the truth eventually. He tried to get his son to return home, but Tesla he adamantly refused. Eventually, he was forced to return home when he was arrested for not having a residence permit. For a year, Tesla worked as a teacher in Gospic, the town where his family lived, but his extended family 
family. They wanted to help him get back to school, so they pooled their funds, and off to Prague he went. But it wasn't an easy jump back into academia. He arrived too late to actually enroll. And even if he hadn't been late, Tesla was missing some of the key studies required to enroll. Namely, these were Czech and Greek. So Tesla once again did not achieve his academic dreams, but by 1881 he was able to find work in his preferred field. He had found a job as an electrical engineer with the Central Telephone Company in Budapest. While working there, he and a friend had a habit of walking through the park. One day during the walk, Tesla got one of his visions. He knew how to build an induction motor. He picked up a stick, found a patch of dirt, and sketched out his idea there and then. He then went on to build a prototype of this motor. It made sense to him, and he knew the importance importance of it, but he couldn't drum up much interest for his invention in Europe. While Tesla was working in Europe, Thomas Edison had launched his Edison Company, which included a branch in Paris. Tesla secured a job at the Continental Edison Company, helping with the installation of lighting in Paris. His talents were soon taken advantage of for design and for troubleshooting. Within two years, he was recruited to travel to America and work for Edison directly in New York. He and hundreds of others worked in Manhattan installing lights and building out an electric utility for New York City. Tesla described his experiences and impressions of Edison thus. I came from Paris in the spring of 1884 and was brought in intimate contact with him, Thomas Edison. We experimented day and night. His existence was made up of alternate periods of work and sleep in the laboratory. He had no hobby, cared for no sport or amusement of any kind, and lived in utter disregard of the most elementary rules of hygiene. There can be no doubt that if he had not married later a woman of exceptional intelligence, who made it the one object of her life to preserve him, he would have died many years ago from consequences of sheer neglect. So great and uncontrollable was his passion for work. But as he had in his first year of school, Tesla was also a non-stop worker. One story relates that he stayed out all night working and took some jibes from people for being out all night. When Edison found out he was actually out working, Tesla earned Edison's respect. Working for Edison, it wasn't ideal for Tesla though. He only lasted six months at the company. Edison and Tesla disagreed over alternating current and direct current, with Tesla favoring alternating current and Edison favoring direct. But it's still unclear if this disagreement was the primary reason why Tesla ended up leaving the company. Tesla and Edison also differed in their approaches to business and science. Edison was attuned to the marketing side of things, while Tesla was highly focused on the scientific invention and innovation part of his work. It's possible his leaving may have been precipitated by a bonus that he thought he was getting, which he was later refused. A manager at the Edison Company had challenged employees to design two different machines. The first person to successfully do so would receive a huge bonus, $50,000, which translates to millions of dollars by today's standards. Tesla jumped at the chance to tackle this invention and earn a huge amount of money. He completed the task, presented his work, and was denied the bonus. The manager and Edison claimed that the challenge had been issued jokingly, and Edison himself told an upset Tesla, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. Regardless of the reason, the fact is that Tesla departed from Edison's company only after a few short months. He had it in his mind that he was going to start his own company, where he would research and work with alternating current. <laughs> It wasn't so easy to get started, though. When Tesla quit Edison's company, he had to earn money to live on by digging ditches for only $2 a day. My high education in various branches of science, mechanics, and literature seemed to me like a mockery, he said of this time. While he was doing that, though, he was pitching investors. He found people who liked what they heard and trusted the scientific knowledge of this young immigrant. By 1885, he was working on getting his arc lighting system patented and had a funding promise from two businessmen to start Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. Only a year into the venture, though, they pulled out and left Tesla in the lurch. Yet again, the inventor was penniless. In 1886, though, he met two men who were looking to invest in scientific inventions. They set Tesla up with a laboratory in New York City, established a profit-sharing structure, and the Tesla Electric Company was born. In only a year, Tesla had created an induction motor that ran on alternating current. This time, he had two business partners who were ready and willing to handle the marketing and business end of things. Soon after, Tesla published a paper entitled A New System of Alternating Current Motors and Transformers. It laid out his ideas, and it got him noticed. 
George Westinghouse was one of the people who read the paper, and he liked what he read. Westinghouse licensed Tesla's induction motor and also gave him a consulting job at the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Lab in Pittsburgh. Westinghouse wanted to be the person who provided the United States with long-distance power, and he believed Tesla was the person who was going to help him achieve that goal. In the early 1890s, Westinghouse and Edison were competing heavily in the electric industry. Edison was throwing out claims that Tesla's AC current wasn't safe, and meanwhile Westinghouse was facing financial difficulties. But Westinghouse paid Tesla for the licensing, and so he had the ability to continue working on projects that he wanted to. One of those projects he might have actually have heard of, and that would be the Tesla coil. The Tesla coil, which he patented in 1891, allowed electricity to be transmitted wirelessly. It was the first invention of its kind, and it was used in antennas that were used to send telegraphs. And even though the original design isn't used anymore, a different version of this is still used in TV and radio to this very day. 1891 was also another landmark in Tesla's life, for it was the year that he was granted U.S. citizenship. Tesla continued his relationship with Westinghouse into the 1890s as they sought his help for the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Westinghouse was in charge of lighting the entire event, but also had their own display there. Here, he gave demonstrations to the public, showing how AC current worked. <laughs> Tesla's next major project it came at Niagara Falls. Power was being generated by the falls, but there was need for an efficient transmission system. Based on Tesla's recommendation, Westinghouse was hired to build an AC generation system at Niagara. Tesla did the design work, and the resulting hydroelectric power plant began providing electricity to the city of Buffalo, New York. With all of these projects, Tesla was gaining visibility both in America and the rest of the world. He was also getting to know many high-profile people, and not all of them were in the scientific sphere. One of the American celebrities that Tesla got to know was Mark Twain. Even when he was living in Croatia, Tesla was reading Twain's books. The two met in New York City, having crossed paths at a social event. Twain had always been interested in technological innovation, so the two spent much time together in Tesla's lab. A photograph of Twain's hand that Tesla took using light from Crookes tubes brought Tesla right to the edge of discovering X-rays. Unfortunately, though, he didn't realize quite how close he had come until X-rays were actually discovered and the use of Crookes tubes in the invention was made known. This was not the only experiment that Twain was a part of, though. There was also an experiment that was specifically designed to address Twain's digestive issues. Twain was often constipated, and he wasn't shy about complaining of this condition. Tesla had developed a vibrating disc that would essentially shake whoever stood on top of it. He urged his author friend to climb on board the device and literally have his digestion issues solved by shaking his bowels loose. When Tesla thought that Twain had had enough of the shaking treatment, he told him to get off. But, well, Twain he didn't want to get off. He stayed on top of the disc and was continued to be shaken, ignoring Tesla's urgings. He should not have ignored Tesla's urgings, though, because eventually the shaking did its job and then some. The famous author quite literally went to the bathroom in his suit in the middle of Nikola Tesla's laboratory. Tesla never stopped inventing. He said that he only slept two hours per night and was always looking for the next project. Wireless transmission of electricity was one one of his main goals, but he needed funding to achieve it. Living in New York, he had ample access to wealthy people. He was able to convince J. Pierpont Morgan of the viability of wireless transmission, and the banker provided him with $150,000 to build a transmission tower. He was competing with Marconi to transmit wireless messages, but Marconi got there first. Investors, including Morgan, pulled their funds from Tesla's project, and he was forced to abandon the effort in 1906. When the project was abandoned, Tesla didn't just have to stop construction, he actually had to mortgage the property. Tesla he owed huge amounts of money to the Waldorf Astoria. He lived at the lavish hotel, and he lived large, spending $20,000, which is nearly half a million dollars today, in the short time he lived there. In 1917, the transmission tower it was demolished after Tesla lost it in foreclosure. He also tried to sue Marconi, asserting that he had stolen Tesla's ideas in order to create his wireless transmission technology. <laughs> Tesla was a genius, there's no doubt about it, but he was also a difficult man. He had many quirks and obsessions and was completely, utterly focused on his work. He never married, thinking that a woman in his life would interfere with his work. As he said, I do not think you can name many great inventions that have been made by married men.
But there are also indications that Tesla perhaps didn't think he was worthy of women. He also became dissatisfied with the attitude of modern women in the 1920s. In a 1924 interview, Tesla explained his thoughts on women. I had always thought of women as possessing those delicate qualities of mind and soul that made her, in these respects, far superior to man. I had put her on a lofty pedestal. I worshipped at the feet of the creature I had raised to this height, and, like every true worshipper, I felt myself unworthy of the object of my worship. But all this was in the past. Now the soft-voiced gentlewoman of my reverent worship has all but vanished. In her place has come the woman who thinks that her chief success in life lies in making herself as much as possible like man, in dress, voice, and actions, in sports and achievements of every kind. Tesla put some of his social and nurturing energy that he wasn't putting towards women towards the pigeons that flocked throughout New York City. And one pigeon in particular caught his attention. I have been feeding pigeons, thousands of them for years, but there was one, a beautiful bird, pure white with light gray tips on its wings. That one was different. It was a female. I had only to wish and call her, and she would come flying to me. I loved that pigeon as man loves a woman, and she loved me. As long as I had her, there was purpose to my life. When that pigeon was hurt, Tesla invented a device that would help heal its wing and leg. Tesla lived out the rest of his life in New York City. He never married, but he did surround himself with the famous and intellectual people of the day. He invented constantly, right up through the 1930s, until he was well in his 70s. In January 1943, a maid decided to enter Tesla's hotel room, even though he had put up a Do Not Disturb sign. This sign had been in place for 48 hours, and when the maid opened the door, she was confronted with the sight of the famous inventor's body. He died of coronary thrombosis at the age of 86. Behind him, Tesla left a legacy of invention, innovation, and scientific exploration. He played a crucial role in the spread of electricity and the creation of devices that led to the technologies that we all have today. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also check out some of our videos from the archives over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.